Friday, everybody. Hope everybody's looking forward to the weekend. Um, I know I am. I'm supposed to get some snow this weekend, so hopefully we'll be skiing in some fresh powder soon. But um, <clears throat> anyways, I had somebody asked me to do a little demo of this data form because um, I keep talking it up. So I thought I'd do, do something really quick, how we're using it in one area in um, the group I'm in for cloud cost spending. Um, so let's see. Let's start with... Um, let me start with this image here. So, <clears throat> as I mentioned in my previous videos, we use uh, cloud workflows. Everything's, we do everything in GCP, um, cloud workflows. But a recent addition, I've added in the data form aspect of it at the very end of like an ETL pipeline. And the reason for this being is, uh, although this isn't a very complicated uh, kind of workflow, SQL workflow, we do have a number of scheduled queries that we've had that we're migrating to data form where we have a lot of common table expressions buried into the SQL text and it's just really unmanageable. It's very difficult to try to wrangle um, all that stuff. Debug it, fix it, um, test it is probably more importantly. So this is where data form comes in. It's very similar to DBT. People are probably more familiar with DBT than data form, but data form is, I would say, the GCP kind of native version. Uh, it's free. It's included with BigQuery, so you don't have to run any external infrastructure um, or run it like in DBT Cloud or anything like that or pay for it. So if you're a BigQuery user, you might want to look at this. And essentially, it's just to do SQL orchestration. So as I mentioned previously, you know, having these schedule queries with a whole bunch of uh, common table expressions, we might want to just break them all up into smaller chunks to make it a lot easier to reason about. But then again, we want to, you know, um, chain all those together or create like a DAG or dependencies uh, to make sure the end result, we get what we're looking for and, you know, we can do it with confidence if we ever have to make any changes. So... This is a high level, what happens, we have these upstream workflows that run. In this particular example, we're um, going out to data proc and looking for idle clusters. Now, we define an idle cluster as something that, a cluster that's been spun up and it's just sitting there and it hasn't had a job uh, ran against it for the last day, okay? And the way we do that is we use the um, monitoring metric API to do a time series query against um, a particular project. Now we have a lot of projects. We have over a thousand projects. So uh, this at scale can get really hard to or more challenging to deal with. Obviously if you just go into a single project and look it's pretty easy but since we're doing this across like a thousand over a thousand projects it's nice to have all this stuff consolidated into a central data warehouse like BigQuery and so we can do reporting with uh, right now we're using Looker. So we do a query to the metrics API like here we're seeing uh, max for the last day, give me the running jobs and we'll get a metric value back. Additionally, at the same time we're running the jobs, I call them scrapers, the job scraper here. Um, we also run one to get all the clusters. We wanna run these in parallel so they can kind of get a somewhat of a consistent snapshot of the of essentially the state. Because we do have a number of ephemeral clusters that come up and come down that are automated, but we also have a lot of stuff that's um, legacy that might have been manually created or maybe somebody created with the CLI and they never shut it down and they forgot about it. So this right here calls the Google APIs uh, against the cluster and here we're just getting basic information, um, cluster name, project ID, cluster UUID region, and then how many uh, master workers we have, how many uh, worker nodes that we have and the instance type of all those because that all factors into the cost. Okay, then what we do is we uh, essentially do a left outer join, join these up and we say, hey, give me all the clusters um, that for today, um, we have this all partitioned by day, that don't have a job associated with them. And this is where kind of the data form stuff comes together. Uh, additionally, with each one of these, these are each a, a data form SQL transformation, and they're all kind of tied together with dependencies. We also do um, the uh, assertion, so we can do a assertion testing to make sure that, like, hey, 
you know, cluster UUID shouldn't be null, region shouldn't be null, or maybe it should be in a certain value range, things like that. That's where the assertion stuff comes into play. So that's really nice. So when the end result, we have a table that should be uh, accurate and not have like nulls where we don't expect them. All right, so that's high level. This is kind of what it would look like at the end. Let's go ahead and uh, take a look at this real quick. So here, uh, we use Cloud Scheduler to schedule these jobs to run, okay? And then here's a list of, we use using Cloud Run Jobs, and um, here's a list of the, the ones that just recently ran. So if we kick these off, we can do a force run. Now this runs every day. I engineered it so we can run it multiple times a day if we want to, or we could just run it you know, once a day, which is kind of what it's scheduled. So you can see here now they're pending, they're starting up, and each one of these is, so let's uh, drill into one of these. This is the one that's going out and get the scraper. If we go look at this guy, um, we have 10 of these um, essentially containers running because this pulls from our image uh, registry in Cloud Run Jobs and we spec specify the parallelism here. We want to do 10. So it's going to spin up 10 of these and then we break up how many projects each one of these tasks uh, work on. So makes it so it runs a lot quicker versus if we were to try to go over a thousand projects over, you know, kind of like a, a single loop that might might take take a while to do that. Okay. So this runs the end result. We should get a table here, this idle clusters. Okay. And this is the information that we're looking for. I took out the project and cluster name. Um, but here we get like the cluster ID, the region, and then this is where some of that metadata came from. We can see that these instances, you know, they have like you're typically one master, but then it's the worker nodes that can get kind of pricey. Like this one, it's 24 of these uh, high mem eight core nodes, and that can get pretty pricey. Okay, just sitting there idle doing nothing, according to the metrics API. All right. So then over here is the data form aspect. <clears throat> now this is underneath the. Uh, you know, data form here in the BigQuery console. Um, this particular scenario setting, we have a cluster daily snapshot that we do. We have a daily job snapshot that we do. And then we have essentially this roll up. We're also doing this for Vertex AI to see if we have idle endpoints that have models deployed to them. But let's walk through this pretty quickly. Here we'll have the daily cluster. See it's straightforward SQL. Nothing uh, rocket science here. Although I do do a window function over this and partition by the cluster UUID and the, and the date. That way we'll just get the most recent uh, entries that were written to this table. Because if we run this multiple times a day, uh, we don't want to have uh, duplicates coming back in here. Um, and the way we define the unique constraint essentially is the cluster UUID by the ingest, uh, ingest date. So that's this. And then we just write down here. Uh, select from this uh, CTE where the row number equals one. All right. Now this is the config part of the data form. And here we're specifying that this is a tight table. And then these are the assertions on the resulting table. So this table, this is the name of the table. This is what will be materialized inside BigQuery since it's a table and it'll be put in this schema. So I have this in a, in a configuration um, in the data form.json down here to say this is the scratch schema. Now the scratch schema, I just have it expire the tables after, I don't remember what, two days or three days or something like that. Um, and that's all it is, just kind of an ephemeral area where we create a temporary table. And that way I don't have to deal with uh, doing any of the cleanup manually. All right, and then here's a tag. So you can just run this tag if you want. You can run multiple tags. This will come into play uh, down here when we see about the dependencies. Here's the same thing with the daily snapshot. It's a Pretty much the same exact stuff, uh, different query. And then here's the um, here's the cluster, kind of like the, it's not really a roll up, but aggregation, I guess, of these. So you can see on this one, though, it's kind of structured a little different. The config type is called incremental. And then we have some additional things thrown in here. Now, what this is for is this is telling data form that this is going to be an incremental load. So we're not scanning like, an entire, you know, table of data, because in BigQuery, uh, all tables are essentially full table scans, unless you have it partitioned or clustered. 
and then it, you can kind of reduce the amount of data that you have to process. That's really important because you're charged for what you what you query and what you process. In our scenario, we're on kind of like a flat model with Google, so we can query the internet and pay the same. Um, but that's just something you might want to keep in mind. So type incremental, the protected uh, is false. This means that we can uh, we can recreate the table by specifying a full refresh. And essentially what it'll do is it will drop the idle clusters table in this data proc schema um, when this all runs and rematerialize it, okay? And when it does that rematerialization, you can see here in big, we have a BigQuery specification where um, we say partition by uh, ingest date. So this will uh, partition this resulting table um, by the ingest timestamp. So making queries uh, much faster for the reporting. And then here's uh, also our assertions and our unique keys. Now this right here for this particular table, this is important because this this kind of drives what the merge queries, oops, what the merge query is going to look like on the back end when, when data form runs. So this is going to merge and say where cluster ID, you know, source cluster equals target and source uh, ingest date equals target ingest date. So it's important that you get, get this down right. Then here's the tag. Now this tag is actually what we use inside this data form transformation right here. So when we call this transformation uh, in this workflow, we specify the ta this tag here that we wanna run. And as part of that, we specify uh, the dependency to run the dependencies true so it's, these are what we have set up for these dependencies. It'll actually run these two uh, SQL transformations before running this one, okay? And then here's essentially the, the query for this to kind of do this uh, final resulting table. So you can see here we do a, a ref, so we don't actually have to hard code the table name in there. This will automatically get resolved by data form via, from here, okay? So it, it'll add in the ETL uh, scratch snapshot or ETL scratch data set dot table name. It'll add all that in here for you, which is kind of nice. Uh, and then here's the incremental part. So we say when it's incremental, we just do a slack, uh, sorry, select max uh, ingest date from this table. So we're only uh, updating a small subset. Now, if we run a rebuild of this entire thing, um, it'll just basically, like I said, drop this table and recreate it. Now I did put this in here, which I didn't go over. So I added this constants look back days for the, um, you know, like the partition of data that we want to query. And by default, it's just the current day. So it's just going to get today's data. Okay. But the source tables have all the historical kind of like commit log uh, data in there. So it's going to have multiple entries and multiple days in there. So if I want to change this look back when we do a full rebuild, uh, I can go inside the constants.js uh, here and I can change this to whatever, 90, 100, and however much data you got back there, change it to that. And then when we rerun uh, the execution up here, we can do um, idle clusters. And then right here is run with full refresh. This will basically drop this table and rebuild everything from scratch. Okay. Um, yeah, so this is pretty slick. Uh, yeah, you can run a little interactive thing here before you commit this. Uh, we're just using the internal repository inside Google, but you can actually tie this into your GitHub repo if you want and trigger the stuff off. Um, you can do releases and off branches and all that stuff. So let's see, is there anything else I want to cover in here? I think that's kind of basic, basically it. It's really nice. I, I like it a lot. Um, I've been meaning to get around to using this, and now that I've figured out enough to be dangerous, uh, we're going to go all in on this and move all of our, we're in the process of doing this, moving all of our scheduled queries o over to um, to like these data form transformations. So, or I just mentioned it in passing real quick. Uh, the other thing is you can, before you commit any of this code, you can run a uh, kind of preview here and see what the data is going to look like to make sure everything looks like legit. Obviously, you're going to have all your assertion testing in here, but like if we were to run um, this assertion test here, 
for the row conditions, which is the first one here, where, you know, cluster, all this stuff's not null, this should return no rows, which it didn't. So that that's fine, that passed. Uh, let's go ahead and run this now, just to do a preview to show what that's like, but I'm gonna go ahead and filter out the <coughs> project ID real quick, and then um, cluster name, just be. Okay, so if we run this now, we should, uh, oops, syntax error. Let me type that properly. Oh, duh. Wait, where is it? Oh, shit. Okay, what did I do wrong here? Compile. All right, so that ran fine. So you can see here, so like you can do the incremental, which will just do uh, whatever I specified inside that, that SQL, whatever gets pulled out of here. Or if I do a full rebuild, it'll just rebuild that whole entire table. Um, so yeah, that's, that's pretty nice. So let's go ahead and revert that. And I will show you a little bit on the, uh, um, on like, let's do look at the job here. So this is gonna have all those in there. So let me get rid of the uh, cluster name, project name, project name, yeah, this should be good, I mean, I'll revert this, but just, just look at this here, okay, now this should all be just today's, which it is, the 12, right, but if I wanted to do a full rebuild, we could go in this constants, and if I set this to 90, and then both these would use that. If we run this. Now you'll see data going back to whatever we have in the source table. So here's like, you know, the 10th, 11th, um, stuff like that, which is pretty cool because what that means is when we would go, let's do that here too. Yeah, we don't need to do that here. But yeah. So that's really nice. Nice little kind of uh, scratch box that you can play around with and uh, isolation before you commit it to make sure your data looks good. And uh, so there you go. Bob's your uncle. <laughs>